What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Supergirl season four, episode titled Call to Action, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Supergirl this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. Okay, um, there's a lot to unpack in this episode. Like there was a lot of moving parts, stuff going here, there, all over the place really. So I could sit and talk about this episode for like 30 or 45 minutes, but Look, don't worry. I'm not going to do that to you guys. So I'm going to focus on some of the things that really kind of worked for me. I was kind of excited about and some stuff that really confused me. So if I skip over any of the lighter moments in the episode, it's only because I really, really, really want to talk about some of these other things. So excuse me for that. But down in the comments below, let me know if there's anything that I didn't talk about that you want to sound off on uh, down there. And if I feel like I need to add something to it, I'll jump down in the comments and let you guys know. But with that being said... Let's start off with the Ben Lockwood stuff in this week's episode. So I just want to throw this out there. I think that Ben Lockwood, AKA Agent Liberty, is one of the most terrifying and frightening villains we've had on any of these shows, particularly because of the power he wields in getting the masses to follow behind him. And it really reflects like real day society. And typically that bothers me. Like, you know, I've complained about that in these shows, but you know, Supergirl has slowly over the course of a few episodes adjusted itself a little bit and it makes more sense within the narrative of the show. So if we're looking at the character from the standpoint of Agent Liberty as a character on the show, he is absolutely terrifying. I mean, this is a character with absolutely no meta powers, no alien powers, nothing like that. He just has a lot of people who believe in what he's saying. And we're seeing just how dangerous that is in this episode. And Sam Witwer is playing this character incredibly well. So I just have to say, so far, this this uh, Ben Lockwood, Agent Liberty character that we have this season is one of the scariest villains, if not the scariest villain that we've ever had on any of these Arrowverse shows. And for completely unrelated, like typical supervillain reasons, he just has people believing in him and that's scary. And I just have to give a hats off to the showrunners and the team behind Supergirl for being able to somewhat humanize this absolutely awful person. Um, and I say that because we keep seeing flashes of his family, you know, you see him with his wife and his kid and it's just like everyday stuff, which is something that you don't see a lot of times with supervillains. I think we saw that a little bit with Damian Dark in season four of Arrow. So it's kind of like they we're getting that here with, uh, Agent Liberty, Ben Lockwood. They're doing a better job of it, I think here than they did with Arrow in season four, but you know, just humanizing him and making him seem so real and so visceral. He's one of my, like, as far as uh, Supergirl season four, he's one of my favorite things about this season because I'm really, I, I'm disgusted by this character and what he's willing to do, but the writers and the showrunners and everybody's doing such a great job with them, especially Sam Witwer. It's just, it's just crazy. And also it was very interesting seeing just how unprepared Kara was for this debate um, I, I just want to throw something out. Like, this is just my observation. And you guys let me know in the comments how you feel about this. The showrunners like seeing Supergirl and Kara not win. Like, she doesn't, they don't give her a lot of wins. Uh, and when I say wins, I mean, she's not, she's not able to overcome or be successful as often as you would expect, uh, you know, based on the fact that the show is called Supergirl and she is the main character. And this episode, she goes through a lot of random stuff, uh, but the two main things she does is this scene here, and then there's a scene later in the episode where she has a fight. We'll talk about that uh, at the end of this review. But in both scenes, she doesn't really, she's not successful in, in beating anything. She can't beat Ben Lockwood here, and then she doesn't really win with the other battle at the end of the episode. And this is kind of a thing with Supergirl. They just love to not give her that, ability to overcome things. And I can't believe that people who are a fan of the show that watch this all the time don't notice that. They don't notice that Kara and Supergirl, uh, you know, most of the time is not successful in what she's trying to do. She either stumbles into success or the team gets the success with her and sort of gives her that pedestal. 
It's very strange. Now, I don't normally get into stuff like this, but I do want to throw something out about the Thanksgiving aspects of this episode, the themes within this episode, because it was kind of important to the interview between Kara and Ben, because that was like his nail in the coffin for her in that interview. And before I talk about this, let me just tell you a little bit about me personally, so you understand where I'm coming from. I'm not like, Thanksgiving is not a big holiday for me. It never was for my family. It wasn't something we did a lot with. And over the years, I just really haven't celebrated Thanksgiving and some of my friends have Friendsgiving, which is like a time to gather together with friends, but it's not actually, they don't do the stuff that's considered tradition with the holiday. So, I mean, there's a lot of difference opi differences of opinions when it comes to it, but it is a hot button topic because of the treacherous history of Thanksgiving and the impact that it's had on the country. So I find it a little odd. This is just my opinion here that a show like Supergirl that has a more progressive uh, thought process when it comes to the characters and the way they write these characters that the, that the good guys would be the ones doing Thanksgiving and that the bad guys would be against it. That's like, I'm not really sure how I feel about that in terms of the writing. Cause it seems a little odd that, that these characters would be on board with that based on all of their ideals over the seasons on Supergirl. I realize it's, you know, it, it's a holiday and they're trying to throw it in there, but it just seems a little strange. Am I weird about that? Is that weird? It just feels a little weird to me because it seems like this holiday would represent so much of what the show is against. They're just going to pretend all the characters, especially Kara, is so you know stupid that she didn't know the history. I, I, I don't know. It's just weird to me. And you guys know I don't do this very often, but I was totally right about the James and Lena situation in this episode. So James was trying to go undercover to get the story on you know Ben Lockwood and all of his followers and this whole Children of Liberty thing. Lena doesn't want him to do it because she feels like it's dangerous and he shouldn't be doing it, but he does it anyway. And then she comes clean about helping him with the whole vigilante thing. And it causes a huge blow up and kind of screws up their relationship. James walks away from Lena. And so she is left standing there like, I did what I thought was right. I loved you. I cared about you. And you just don't really care at all. And so my entire theory for this was that everything in this story was leading up to a big blow up between James and Lena. I saw it from tons of miles away because it's just how CW does stuff. And so that's what happened. But Lena had some really interesting stuff this week and we'll talk about the James stuff uh, right now. So Supergirl writers, could you please just explain who James Olsen is to me? Because I'm so confused with this character now. You guys have done so much with him over the last few seasons that I don't even know who he is as a character anymore. Um, I thought I did. But I mean, is he like a photographer? Is he still a photographer? Is he an investigative reporter? I mean, he worked alongside Clark Kent at the Daily Planet. I would assume that he would have picked up some of those skills along the way. Is he a vigilante superhero? Is he the head of CatCo? Is he smart? Is he stupid? Is he naive? Like, what? what is this character supposed to be? Who is this character supposed to be at this point? Because he's just all over the place. So I'm supposed to believe that... James Olsen, the Guardian, makes the decision to go out and meet with Ben Lockwood, or he thinks he's meeting with Ben Lockwood. He ends up meeting with one of his lackeys and just believes all of these lies that this person is telling him. Because even I'm watching and I'm going, this guy is definitely just laying it on heavy for James. And the fact that James, a character who I gave way more credit to, um, in terms of picking up things and figuring things out and stuff, just totally believed everything he was saying. Oh, it's just my wife. Oh, you know, I'm this huge fan. And I mean, all of it was sort of just making James feel like he was hyping him up. He was gassing him up really. And James fell for it. And I don't know how that's possible. There's no way that, that James is that naive, right? I mean, he can't be. But anyway, ultimately it gets him captured at the end of the episode when he falls for all this stuff again, even after he's figured out that they're playing him. <sighs> Guys, like, I'm so disappointed in James. The writers need to, like, narrow this character down and give him some real, like, character traits that follow through because right now he's just a walking, talking plot device. All right, so moving away from James, let's talk about Lena. So if you guys have been watching my reviews for a while, 
you will know that Lena is one of my favorite characters on Supergirl. I love Katie McGrath. I think she does a great job. The last couple seasons was pretty good. Uh, at the end of last season and the beginning of this season, it's been kind of like, you know, on the fence for me. And of course, her accent comes and goes, which is something that annoys me a bit. But overall, I've really loved the character of Lena Luthor. And it feels like she's getting back to her old self in this episode as we get more sciencey stuff. And we're dealing with the Harun L, which is the rock the magical rock from Krypton that we saw that was powering the shields, I believe, on Argo City. It was also used to create the world killers, and she is experimenting with it, which is something I've been wondering about since the beginning of the season, if we were ever going to really get back to this, and we finally have. And we find out that the rock does something interesting. So in her search to cure cancer with the Harun L, Lena accidentally makes these hearts that she's using in the lab invincible, like Kryptonianly invincible. So there's something weird going on with the process of these uh, hearts and the Harun L. And I believe this is a nod to the Everyman project. It's been touted around that we were gonna see that this season. It was one of those leaks that came out. And I do believe this is leading up to it and it may possibly be a way for Agent Liberty to actually get superpowers. I kind of don't want him to have superpowers, but if he does actually get them, it will be from this project. Now, based on this information, let's talk about something that Kara's mom said in this episode that's absolutely ridiculous to me. And many people have pointed it out, but I caught on to it when I first heard it in the episode, and I'll tell you why. So at Thanksgiving dinner, Lena comes clean to everybody about the stuff she's been working on and the fact that she thinks that she can give humans superhuman powers. Now we know based on Earth One and just all these Earths in the multiverse that metahumans exist, that they are a thing, and that people, regular humans, can be granted powers under particular circumstances. This is something that everyone at the DEO knows, this is something that Kara knows, that Alex knows, and I'm assuming that her mother would know because I'm pretty sure they've had conversations about some of their adventures over the years. But her mother says something, I'm gonna paraphrase, but I wrote this down in the episode. Her mother says something to me that's just baffling that the writers would even put this in the episode. She goes, and again, paraphrasing here, the biological process that gives aliens powers is incompatible with human DNA. This is something on the fourth season of Supergirl that her mother is saying, knowingly, you know, or we knowing that there are tons of characters that were humans that were granted powers. And let's talk about two of them right now. Here we have Silver Banshee and Livewire, both human characters who were granted superhuman powers and they live on Earth 38. So there's no discrepancies here between being on a different Earth. They're actually characters from Earth 38. Now, Silver Banshee's powers come from a quote unquote family curse. So I guess if you wanted to argue that even though she's a metahuman, she's not an alien based power metahuman. So maybe that's a difference, but you can't argue that with Livewire. Livewire got her powers directly from Supergirl. She was in the helicopter when Supergirl was trying to save her. Supergirl was struck by lightning and it gave powers to Livewire. I can't believe the writers would even, what was the point of putting this in the episode, putting that line in the episode? The debate they have about playing God and granting people powers or not granting people powers and who would be a good guy, who would be a, a bad guy, all of that made enough sense to me that that's all we needed to talk about. Her mother didn't need to chime in with the medical jargon because that does it didn't really seem to make any sense. The only thing that I think it could be alluding to is something regarding uh, Nia Nall, maybe possibly, and we'll talk about her in just a second. Um, but yeah, in terms of like humans getting alien powers, we've, we've seen it happen on earth 38 and no one there chimed in and said, well, Livewire got her powers from Supergirl. They just kind of like let the comment go. It's really weird. Okay, let's talk about Nia in this episode for a moment. So she keeps falling asleep and she says she has narcolepsy, but then she has a hard time remembering what the condition actually is, which should be like a total red flag that she's lying about it. But they've turned her into somewhat comedic relief from time to time. So I'm not really surprised that they were trying to go for a punchline there. Didn't work for me. I'm like, okay, obviously she's lying and the, our characters are just supposed to believe it. Either way, we know that she's supposed to be a character called Dreamer. That's what they mentioned in a lot of the early 
press releases when she got cast. So I'm assuming that her falling asleep has something to do with her powers actually coming into play. And it's possible that that's what Supergirl's mother's comment about alien DNA being incompatible with humans. It might have something to do with Nia here. But other than that, I mean, I just can't imagine what that comment would be why you would even add that in. But Nia had some great moments in this episode with Kara, and it seems like she's a very uh, she's a very sweet character overall. So it's going to be interesting to see like where they go with this character for the rest of the season. I know some people saying she's boring and that she's uninteresting, but I disagree. I think she is interesting. I just think that the writers are preoccupied with so many other things. I mean, look how much we've talked about in this episode. There were so many things happening this week. It was like everything is just all over the place. And I have to rant about Brainiac for just a moment. Now, don't get it twisted. Brainiac is one of my favorite characters. I love Jesse in this role, and I think he does add a lot to the show. The one thing that bothers me is the CW has a really hard time, or a bad habit, I should say, of making really smart characters really stupid. You can go through each show and name the characters that are used, the smart characters who are used for comedic effect. Because I guess it's supposed to be like, oh, they're so smart that they laugh off a lot of the simple, like, common sense stuff that we know every single day. Like, all of these smart people are incapable of, of living a normal human life. Whether they're human or not, they're so smart, that's the impression we get. So on Supergirl, we have Brainiac, who, although I, I it's funny at times, I'm so tired of him just being the comedic character. He's just comedy, and he's supposed to be really smart. And I'm going to point out here in a second why I'm so upset about it. But if you go through the CW shows, you look at like Arrow, we have characters like Curtis and Felicity who are really smart, but they're also the comedy in the show. Then you go over to um, Legends of Tomorrow, you have Nate and Ray who are both really smart and they're totally played for comedy on that show. And then you go over to The Flash, you have uh, Cisco, who even though he's probably the most down to earth in terms of the smart, funny characters, he's still the smart, funny character, just in a different way. So the CW just loves to take these really smart characters and just make them like the comedy for the episodes. I don't get that. I, I mean, it's it's honestly so cliche at this point that when it happens, I'm just rolling my eyes. I'm like, here we go. The smart character is going to do something stupid because that's just what they do. They get dumber and dumber and dumber and the showrunners just go with it. I don't understand it. And Brainy's one of my favorite characters. And he had a really cool scene in this week's episode. Oh my gosh, looking at the clock here, I'm trying to make this review as quick as possible, but so many things happened. So what annoyed me in this episode with Brainy was the mask that the Children of Liberty were wearing, which we haven't even talked about those characters. I'm just going to skip over them because this is really the most important thing, is that these regular humans are wearing masks that have special lenses in them so they can mark alien houses so they know which ones to go after. And so Brainiac doesn't figure that out. He actually has the mask in his possession and has not figured out that the lenses actually serve a purpose. We're talking about the smartest character on the earth right now, arguably the smartest character on the earth. And he needed another character to tell him that the lenses in the mask actually served a purpose. My gosh, you guys, I don't even know what to say with this. Like I'm so disappointed that Brainiac had to be told that the lenses meant something. So freaking weird. So weird. But I do have to give them credit for giving him a very cool fight scene where he took on the Children of Liberty and we finally got to see Brainiac do something other than sitting behind a desk and talking over an intercom. So this was a really cool scene. If you did not watch the episode for whatever reason, go check out this scene. It's definitely worth the watch. They tried to compare it to the Quicksilver scenes from the X-Men movies. I'm not going to go as far to say that. I don't think it was that cool. But it was pretty cool, and I was excited to see it. So good on Jesse for doing the scene. I thought it was interesting, and it's always nice to see Brainiac do something other than be the butt of a joke. Okay, I got to hurry up and get through these last bits. All right, so John, the pacifist, says that using telepathy is the equivalent of doing something without consent. And I'm not disagreeing with that. I think that's totally true. But John has actually used telepathy in this season to search for someone, mainly Manchester's fiance, um, without their consent. So you can't have those beliefs and ideals if you just break them whenever you feel like it's necessary. 
So although I agree with John's sentiment here, it does not explain why he does it anyway, even knowing that it's without someone's consent. Okay, all this, and we still haven't even talked about Manchester Black. See what I'm saying about so much stuff going on in this episode? So we confirmed that Manchester Black does not have powers. He's just a street-level vigilante. But I have a feeling that with Lena's, the Harun L, she's going to, um, if the Everyman Project is a real thing, she'll probably give him powers, and that's how he get his powers. And because it was done with that rock, it'll make Supergirl highly susceptible to his powers. That's just my thought process there um also we see him doing a little light torture at the beginning of the episode which i kind of laughed at i'm like i get what they're trying to do here but it just made me laugh because it's like this is really lame he had the cop from that we met earlier in the season you know uh restrained and he was trying to get information out of him and at the end we see that he's willing to do whatever it takes to take out the children of liberty he's a really interesting character i like him but again he was kind of shoved into an episode that had 10 million things happening in it and remember earlier in my review when I talked about Supergirl losing multiple times in this episode where she has a really cool fight where she fights against a dragon? Yes, a dragon in this episode, which was the greatest thing ever and also felt extremely out of place based on everything else that happened this week. But I have to give it up to them. It looked really cool. It was a fun fight. I was very excited with it. However, Supergirl loses to the dragon as well, which is kind of like, all right, um... I guess Supergirl just gets beat by everybody. It's really kind of interesting how that happens. But uh, yeah, I have to give them credit. It was a very cool scene. And, uh, you know, more dragons. I'm totally down for that. Okay, okay, enough, enough. I could talk about so much more in this episode because there were so many things that happened. So Supergirl is really good typically when it comes to character moments, right? It's usually the overarching story or the plot or something along those lines that just doesn't really add up, but they get their character moments correct. In this episode, I feel like the story wasn't necessarily bad. I thought that the all the beats that happened throughout each scene was great. I think the character moments kind of lacked in this episode. And the thing is, Supergirl is known more for its heart and soul than its logic. So a lot of times people are willing to overlook issues with the episode as long as the characters feel like they get it right. And I think in this episode, there was a lot of wrong stuff happening. So I think a lot of people probably say this is one of their least favorite episodes of the season. I won't go that far. I don't think it was my least favorite because I do think there was some really strong stuff that happened in it. But it really was all over the place. So I'm not going to make, I'm not going to keep talking about this. You guys have already listened to me talk enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this episode a, a 7.5 out of 10, because I feel like it was well above average, but it wasn't great. Uh, the battle with the dragon was really cool. And I think the stuff with agent Liberty is kind of interesting. Uh, there's a lot of things with Manchester, Nia, behind the scenes that I can't wait to see more about the stuff with Lena. Just so many things, so many things. So I'm going to leave it at 7.5 out of 10. Anyway, I'm sorry about the late review, guys. Normally I have it up earlier in the day, but because of some other stuff, I had to put it up later. So you guys understand. Uh, but I want to know your thoughts and opinions on this episode. So go down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Call to Action. And uh, let me know in the corner if you agree with my score. You saw it pop up. Go over there and let me know. Do you agree? You disagree? Uh, is it too high, too low? Let me know what you think. And check out some of my videos over here. I uh, got a few new videos over the weekend that you may not have seen. I'm so overwhelmed right now. So many things going on. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys in today's video. I've talked long enough. I'll catch you in the next video.